All right, so Paul, in the last part of this course, we were really how the rockets work, how do we get things into space. So now we kind of need to reflect on why spend money on this at all? What is actually the point of spending money, using money, and, and the economics of it? Because that's actually, as we kind of touched on, what drives space. Yes, and one of the goals of this course is to help you, our students, aware of how space is going to change the world. Yeah. And you may end up in jobs where you're going to say, do we do this from space? So knowing what you could do from space, what's cost effective, well, how does a space industry work? Yep. So the world space industry, um, different definitions, different numbers all over the place, but it's roughly 500 billion US dollars a year. As of filming now. That's right. And climbing quite rapidly, yes. for the reasons you just talked about, the fact that price is going down. And to put this in perspective, 500 billion is a meaninglessly large number, yeah. but that's roughly equivalent to the GDP of Sweden. Okay. Um, <laughs> or, or the world cosmetics industry. <laughs> so we can choose makeup or space, got it, all right. Makeup, space, or Sweden, take all your right. pick. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people predict, as you said, this number is, going to, is rapidly increasing, will be in the trillions yes. in the not too distant future. Yes, so if it goes up to a couple of trillion, that's equivalent to the GDP of Australia. Yep. And uh, so it's got run, but it, this is pretty in perspective. Yep. It's uh, not, not even remotely in the same field as you know, the oil industry. Yes, or exactly. The, the car industry or something like that at this point. That's right. Another thing to bear in mind is that the space industry, if you talk about, for example, the economy of Sweden or Australia or any country, that's mostly people in Sweden buying things for other people in Sweden. That's right. That's not the case here. Not the space. Yes, this is actually a classic colonial economy. We send things up into space and get benefits back onto Earth. Yep. But at this point, nothing in space is manufactured in space. That's right. Everything comes up from the Earth, and all the benefits of space are sent back down to the Earth. That's right. That may change. So at some point in the future, it might actually be a real space economy in the sense that people mine things in space, build things in space yep. to repair things in space. Like, I live in Australia, I might order a pizza which is made in Australia and yep. eaten in Australia, but for ingredients grown in Australia, but that's not what the space industry at the moment. That's right. And again, it may happen in the future, but probably quite a few years off, something like that. Yes. Now, this is an attempt to break down the uh, space industry. And we can see that most of it, probably about 70% of it, is actually commercial. Yeah, and, and I think this is usually the thing that surprises people. We only picture NASA and governments, but that's actually only a, a quarter of the actual industry. Yes, about a third. Yeah. And then if you look at governments, that's about a, roughly 30% of the space industry. And the US government's slightly over half of that. Yep. And then you've got uh, Europe and China and then a whole bunch of bit players. Yeah. So this is the rough breakdown. Now, if you look at the private, the majority, here's how that breaks down. Okay, so we have, so it looks like satellite TV and GPS are the two largest chunks followed by ground and communications. And the funny thing is that we always think about launch, which is the whole lesson yeah. about it, but the launch is actually a very small part of the space economy. That's right. Manufacturing the satellites is larger, like, but still quite small. That's right. Most of it is using them. Yes, okay. So the economy here is the use rather than the physical manufacturing of things. I mean, clearly, satellite TV, you're paying to buy the rewrites of yes. rights to friends so you can broadcast it over Sky TV. That's satellite TV. Yeah. It couldn't happen without the spacecraft up there. That's right. But the total budget, the vast majority of the budget is spent on paying people to film movies to put out or yep. buying sports rights, whatever it might be, and or installing antennas on roofs or yeah. billing and not actually on launching and manufacturing the satellite. And we have quite a few other small bits, right? Tourism, remote sensing, but then we also have this kind of chunk of internet and radio. Yes, yeah, so you can probably count all this chunk as being to do with communication, sending signals to or from space. Yep. And so we'll talk about that next. Okay. The ground is often supporting this. It's, for example, building a ground communication center to upload data to your TV, yep. whatever it might be, or putting antennae on roofs. Um, and then we'll talk about GPS and then remote sensing, which is a very small part here, mm. but it's actually a larger part of the government expenditure. Oh, okay. All right. So here's what now we've broken down the, the US government expenditure. Yep. And so again, people tend to think NASA astronauts. Um, but not the biggest share by any means. Yeah. And then the NASA science, things that were dear to our hearts, yes. like the James Webb Space Telescope and missions to Pluto, whatever it might be. Um, but in fact, it's mostly military. Yeah, mostly military. And that's also the case in other countries, yes. probably Europe, Europe probably less so. Mm. Um, in China, it's very hard to actually distinguish because the yes. military and civilians are so intermixed. That's right. And Russia, it's mostly military. Yes. So 
when we think about space, don't think about rockets and astronauts. Think, think about, about satellite dishes. Because <laughs> that's where the large fraction of the space industry is.